welcome to Survivor Live. We are breaking it down with all of the eliminated castaways. Be sure to stick around for the exclusive extended preview. And if you want your questions in the show, tweet hashtag Survivor Live. We are sitting here with Jeremiah, the most recent ousted <laughs> castaway, and a male good. model. <laughs> Hello, Jeremiah. Welcome Hello. to the show. How are you? I'm good. How are good. you? I'm doing good. Doing good. Okay, so let's begin with the thing that everybody wants to talk about. <laughs> you outed yourself in the show last night. I did. I did. <laughs> okay, what was that? Was that strategy? Was it just like you needed to get it off your chest and be honest? It was just one of them things. Like my main strategy coming into the game, I didn't want to even talk about it. That's why I kind of let my hair just be wind blown. I had a scruffy beard, gained a little bit of weight. So a lot of people that's been on the show before being models, I think they get targeted. So that was part of my strategy. I didn't want to even talk about it, but it just got to the point of the game to where it was me and Spencer and Tosh was sitting there and I was just like, you know, I'm just going to let y'all know. Um, I said, I'm really don't do a whole lot of remodeling. I'm actually a fashion model. And they were just like, oh my God, they flipped out. Because your other thing <laughs> was, you said you were a farmer or a No, no, I actually. Contractor. Yeah, I can, well, I've, I've remodeled all my life. Uh, I've worked in houses. I do all kinds of stuff. And then the job I do in between photo shoots so I can make like a double salary is we got, we work, I work with this company that's got contracts with Gator in Tribicana, so we work on their logos and their machines and we travel all over the East Coast. So okay. yeah, I kind of like to do that. So I was kind of pushing that more than anything, but it just got to the point, I knew I was looking rough. I said, you know what, I'm a fashion model, you know? And Tasha was flipping out. So I said, well, yeah, just go home and Google me, which I've done that for all the fans. And we have done it too. And if you guys haven't done it, get on it right now. <laughs> Jeremiah Wood, model. <laughs> You'll find some really great photos. Oh, some really, really amazing underwear right. shots coming out of the water, just yeah. like I don't know. wet hair, <laughs> glistening abs, really looking good. I appreciate it. So, but your family must be used to you going out and doing wild things. I mean, if you're already a fashion model, so was this a surprise to them, you going out on Survivor? Not a bit, not a bit. Um, they was really surprised that I auditioned for it and wanted to be on the show, um, but they knew that I could do it. It. That's my dad raised me and my brother to be just big time hunters and fishers and just being out. When we was little, like we was never allowed inside. They was just like, boys, get outside, go in the woods, go to the creek. And so I knew I could bring that to the game. I knew it would be no problem just to survive. Um, but they was just, they was ecstatic when they found out that I that I was going to be on the show. It was just, and like my mom, she's she's real tender hearted. And so she was already crying and congratulating me, flipping out. My dad, he's just, he's the big old burly type. He was just like, yeah, boy, I hear you going ah, out there. That's great. <laughs> so, yeah. And they definitely taught you to be a gentleman because you took did. it upon yourself to take care of the ladies on your beauty tribe. Yeah, it's just I was raised with a bunch of yes, ma'am, yes, sirs. Um, everywhere I go, even to this day, 34 years old, if I go into business or go anywhere, it's just I, I present everybody as a yes, ma'am, yes, sir. That's I, the way they do it in the South. It's the way we do it in the South. Mm -hmm. Now, they don't do it a whole lot up north and different places. I have went on some photo shoots and I go in and say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, and I get told real quick quick. I'm not a sir. I'm not a ma'am. Do not ever call me that I again. I know because it so, was. It's yeah. because women, when they're called ma'am, they feel like you think they're an old lady. I guess so. I guess so. But it so, is just, but, and, I mean, you have the southern accent. You're very charming. Right. It's, I think it's pretty obvious that it's just a sign of right. respect. I'm just trying to be respectful. I mean, I just, I want to be treated the way I treat people. And so I just, even during a game, um, you know, it was nothing to, I know I was going to have to lie, cheat, and steal, whatever. Uh, but I did, I did still want to come across as being respectful. I just still want to be that likable person that everybody fell in love with. That's what I tried my best to do. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, well, that's true. Spencer said last night when you guys were throwing each other under the bus for tribal council, <laughs> Jeff's like pitting you against yeah, right. each other. I mean, you have to plead for your life. And Spencer calls you the most likable person he's ever met <laughs> in his entire right. life. Yeah, I kind of wish he didn't say that. I was My strategy was, all right, I'm just going to pin it all on Spencer. I was just Because I knew he had the idol. And so I was trying to let him know that in immunity challenges, he's the biggest immunity threat right now. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and he's got a good strategy, and then he come back with that mess. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Do you love how when Spencer is really concentrating in a challenge, he makes this face like... Oh, man, I made fun of him so bad. <laughs> like his mouth just gaping open, and you're like catching flies in this it's challenge. A, I told him at camp, I said, dude, I said, when we get home and it's all this comes online, I said, you wait. And I said, you wait till you see your facial expressions. He's like, no, man, no. Oh, I said, it's man. 
going to be bad. I said, you're going to get made fun of so yeah, bad. Yeah, but this, that's what's good about Survivor, right? It right. shows you stuff about yourself that is. you wouldn't have had a yep. chance to know otherwise. That's true. And the truth. you get to see the most raw version of yourself. We yep. watched you in, Pondero in the Ponderosa videos, and you're... <laughs> like scruffed up, right. emaciated, long hair, and shocked about what you look like. Yeah, I looked real shocked. Um, I'm telling you, 160 pounds. I, I haven't been 160 pounds in high school. That was the last time I was 160 pounds. But just to go in and see my mustache was like over the over my top lip. <laughs> I said, well, what in the world? But yeah, well, that's, that's real I've, back, was it? You? <laughs> yeah, that's back. Um, <laughs> I've never had a full beard like that. You know, I've always tried to grow a beard, and I, I cannot grow facial hair. I'm 34, still cannot grow a beard. I mean, I'm, I, it's patchy, but that was the first time I've ever seen myself in like a full beard. I said, this is, But I you didn't bad. take a shower right away and you didn't I, shave right I away. I did. Well, I had so much to get off my chest and off my mind, you know, and I had to, you know, meeting uh, Morgan and Sarah and LJ there. We just talked for a while. So I just, I had to get some stuff off my mind first and then I went and looked at myself, but I just had to feel what that bed felt like, you know, mm. I mean, <laughs> bamboo and like ground. It was just, mm -hmm. yeah, I just went ahead and laid it. I knew I was going to be sleeping there. I said, I'll just go ahead and lay here, you know? So, so. nice. <laughs> well, plus what, what I didn't see and what the viewers didn't see is that you were really injured yep. um, after that last challenge where you yep. hoisted Jeffra up onto the boat. Yep. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. It's, uh, I don't know. It, it's never good to get hurt on the show. I went into the challenge and we had a strategy pushing that boat into the water. I knew Tony and him over there, his, mile, his mind's running 100 miles a minute. I knew they went, didn't have a lick of strategy. So I told Spencer, I said, and I told the girls, I said, as soon as this boat hits the water, y'all jump in. I said, man, Spence, I said, we're just going to give it one hard shove. I said, we'll have an unbelievable lead. Because I've been on the water all my life. And I know once you get onto the water, if you get a big surge like that, you, that boat's going to take off. Mm -hmm. Well, it just so happened, Jeffrey couldn't get in in time. And she was screaming for me. She she was about to let go and so I called her I caught her by the legs and I threw her in and I guess it was the whole thing of me throwing her in me getting in the boat and then having to do the challenge and it really hit once we got done so you got so much adrenaline going that you're just running on adrenaline doing these challenges it's not physical strength it's just adrenaline mm -hmm. and once we got and once Spencer and Tosh got everything spelled out it's just like it just hit me like a ton of bricks and I felt it and when I did I just started leaning on his left side um, but yeah it was just a huge knot hit up in between my shoulder blade and my spine uh, my whole upper back I couldn't breathe I could take in about a probably about a quarter of a breath and then wow. it was just it was hurting so bad but I could have used a strategy there. I could have went down to one knee. I could have gave up my spot. That's kind of where I'm kicking myself. But how my daddy raised me and my brother was, if it's not falling off, rub some dirt on it. You'll be all right. Suck it up. And I'm standing there just hurting so bad. And Jeff was trying to talk to us. And I was just like, I'm not budging. I'm not going to show nobody I'm a wimp. Was so. that, <laughs> let me ask you this, because it looks like when, when Jeffra comes up to you after that, uh, after the handshake and she said, okay, final four. Right. And then she comes up to you later in the episode and she's like, never mind, not final four. Yeah. And you're just like, okay. Like, yeah. It just looks like you're just so had, defeated yes, at that point. I had two, two times that I could have really probably been a game changer during that episode. Um, you know, from the start of the show of Vote Now, Bryce, a lot of people said that I made a dumb decision, but I rebounded and I come up with a strong alliance. And coming into that, the only person that was budging in that alliance was Jeffra. And we won her over um, at the reward challenge. I apologize a hundred million times just to let her know that, hey, I'm still with you. Even though I tried to vote you out, I'm still with you. Yeah. And she flipped. But she turned on you guys first. <laughs> she turned to. Yeah. So, and, I, and I really noticed that. But the sometimes. The whole tribe turned on they each other. They did. They did. We did. What's we up? we jailed together. We jailed together in challenges, which was perfect. Like the third day on the island, I taught, I asked everybody. I said, "What is everybody good at?" And I said, "Because I played a lot of sports in my life. I know LJ did." And I said, "You know, it takes everybody to come together to jail together to win." And, you know, LJ told me he was a puzzle genius. You know, I had to believe him. I said, well, I said, if one comes up, you got it. I said, if it's a hand-eye coordination, I said, I don't mean to sound cocky. I said, I'm going to beat everybody out here. But I was being a little cocky. But, uh, but, I know, okay. but I know what I'm good at. You know, and then, then the girls said what they was good at and we was like oh, okay pretty much okay nothing. yeah okay <laughs> whatever <laughs> but we jailed together but we never really had a tight alliance you know alexis and lj was pretty strong but 
we never really had a tight alliance, and I think I would have had a tight alliance if I kept Bryce. Um, mm. It was just something there was a yeah, lot of. Yeah, do you regret stuff. getting rid of Bryce? I, love I look Bryce. about Bryce is awesome. Bryce is awesome. He's we have so talked. Cute. We have talked since the game's been over with, and I've apologized, and we've made up. He's just a great guy. He's a great guy. Great personality. It's just you don't see a whole lot behind the scenes, and there was some stuff that kind of helped me change my vote. But then again, I've kind of regret. I kind of kicked myself, but. If it was going to be a game changer, I don't know, but I rebounded. I rebounded. And as soon as yeah. I got into that first merge, I had Spencer and Tasha. I rebounded. I had Cass. You know, I went to him um, and I told him, and then me and Spencer got to herself. And then he told me he was at the bottom of his alliance. And then he wanted to pull the next JT and Steven. He was just like, dude, you can be JT, I'll be Steven. Spencer? We'll figure this out. Yes, yeah, it's Spencer. That is and really so, funny. and I pulled him in tight. And so me and him, he was my right hand man. And then I pulled Sarah in. And I told Sarah I would take her to the end. So I had three people. I was like, this is going to be perfect. And Where's I Tasha never... in this? Tasha and She's Cass was, was in. You know, they was four, fifth, you know, four, okay. fourth and fifth in with us. But you know how the game, you've been there, you've seen it. So, sometimes you might have to vote somebody out you know so somebody who's fifth in your alliance might turn out to be your your right hand person mm. and uh, but I knew how to get to the end and we and we had the strategy of going to the end never saw Cass doing what she done but with Jeffra Cass everything, everything was perfect well, Cass run everything with her, too. I mean, Cass is a nice woman. I mean, I'm not going to be mean about anybody. She's a nice woman outside of the game, but she made two decisions that I thought was two of the dumbest strategic decisions. It's a kiss of death. I know. I just want people to have common sense. Yes, no. <laughs> that was so frustrating about Cass's move is right. that, okay, she made one big blind side, probably because she just doesn't like Morgan, right? right? And then um, she does nothing else. Yep. And it's, I wish, and she keeps saying that she's a free agent. Yeah, and chaos she's, cast. Yeah, Where's but the you chaos? look at the episodes, where have you seen her be a free agent at? I, you haven't seen it yet. You haven't seen it. Um, she's just, she's strong with her alliance. Well, but she it sounds like she's really tight with Tony. Yeah. Because she's like, was I need Tony yeah. to stay in this game to get me further. Yeah. Why? I don't have a clue. And it, she's trying to be chaos cast. She's trying to be a villain, trying to team up with a villain. Don't make a lick of sense. I just wish everybody would have just took but a deep you, breath. But do you consider Tony a villain? This is interesting because I've know, asked a few people this question. I do in a way of what of how he's playing the game. Now, is he a Russell? No. Is he, I mean, he's lying. He's doing whatever. He's swearing on his family. He's doing everything possible. He's playing his strategy, mm -hmm. and it is working out for him. He's he's a good player, and he's just, he's a strong player. But he's coming across peaceable, too. So yeah. it's hard to say is Tony a villain or not, but he's playing the game. He's so playing a hard game. So when people get to Ponderosa, are they mad at Tony for turning on them? Or are they just like... <sighs> Oh, he's playing the game. You got to hand it to him. He got me. I'm going to be honest with you. It's more Cass than anything. Everybody They're more just, mad at Cass. It was pretty much just, hey, Cass. Hey, Cass. You know, Jesus. Tony does get brought up, and everybody's going, how is he still lasting? And I'm sitting here, I'm like, I tried to get him out. I tried to get y'all to come over. Nobody's budging, and he's picking people off left and right. Yeah. And it's killing me. He's it's a good killing me. sniper under it's, his it's spy shack me. cover. Yes. It's killing. He's funny. Taking pot shots. <laughs> he always sets up a spy shack in the most does. perfect. He's always there at the perfect time. Yep. He's like, does he ever sleep? I don't know. No. I don't I don't think he does. There's been several times at night that I would wake up and he'd be over breaking limbs, starting a fire. One night he he caught the whole the whole shelter that we had built over the uh, the campfire. He caught it on fire. I thought he was gonna burn the jungle down. I said, "What in the world?" You know. I mean, you'd be finally getting just a little bit of sleep. I'm laying there hurting, finally getting a little bit of sleep, and all of a sudden. I'm like, oh, oh my no. gosh, he's a mess. That is what but Rupert used to do. That would make people so mad. What's funny about Tony, he is good entertainment. And just and I'm seeing it now. I wanted to choke him on the island. <laughs> Tony, don't hold that against me. I wanted to choke you on the island. He's probably going to start a Twitter war at you <laughs> after this. But, you know, is watching the show, is he's good entertainment. Yeah. I have to give it to him. He's, he's a I tough I agree. I think all the fans really like him, too. Yep, he's he's, a like, tough he's really making moves. He is. And he's playing a very proactive game. So I do. Yep. I have to give him credit for that. Right. All right, let's take a few fan questions. Okay. Are you Sounds ready good. for this? I'm, I'm ready. I was, let's see. Okay. <laughs> this is from Watch and Tell. What was the beauty tribe's biggest demise? Hmm. The biggest, uh, just that we was just not that strong together. We, we gelled together in challenges, and it was perfect, but nobody really had a strong, like, we never had a strong alliance within alliance. I mean, nobody, everybody was just kind of, 
even though it, it didn't look like we was playing the game towards the end, everybody was still kind of looking towards the end already. And nobody, mm -hmm. everybody was butting heads. Nobody wanted to talk to each other. You know, everybody's being, someone's being immature. It was. Do it, you think that it's a trait for beautiful people to sort of get things handed to them a lot in life? Like opportunities will fall in their laps and people will give them things more because they're attractive? It looks like it in life. You know, I'm 34, fixing to be 35, and I have seen stuff like that really happen in life um, when it goes on looks or just attractiveness. Um, I've seen people just automatically, okay, hold on, let me open the car door for you. Hold on a minute, let me just buy your dinner. You know, and yeah. I've seen stuff, and it's sad that that really happens, but well, that's I, I do see stuff. Well, that's the way of the world. And then it wrong. teaches you a, a learned behavior. If you're an attractive person, your learned behavior is, I don't really have to work that hard. Like, right. if something's going to come to me, it's going to come to me, and it's yep. right for me, and, you know, I will just accept it. Yeah, you're right. So that's the difference between how Tony is playing yep. and how versus Morgan yep. or, like, a lot of people, like, I see from the Beauty Tribe are paying, playing a pretty passive game, yeah. especially Jeffra now, like yeah. she almost, almost made a move. She yeah. almost, almost took control. Did. She could have really like yeah. done something huge. And then she's just like, well, never mind. Yeah. I'll just go yeah, back happened. over here. Yeah. And it, it would have been different if she, if she pulled me to the side and told me when not in front of everybody, Hey, I'm, I'm going back to my old tribe. I could have, I could have scrambled. I could have made it sound like, you know, you're making a worse decision on, you know, I could have, I could have beefed it up to where it was her million dollar move yeah. to stay with us. And that's what we done at the reward. I could have done it again. But, but when she called me out in front of everybody, it was, it was hopeless. I mean, I could have come back, yeah. but I know how tender hearted she is. She's, she's a great girl and she's tender hearted. I could have come back strong and she might have sat there in the dirt and cried, oh. you know, but, but that's how she is. And that's how, that's, that's the sweetness about her. But I knew it was hopeless. I knew I had no chance with her cause they had scared her so much over that they pulled her back in. And, and then they were standing right there with her when she told you right that. There. And yeah. it was just, and it, I know it looks like I could have been conversational and I could have, it would not have worked mm -hmm. at the point of the game. It would not have worked. And me and Spencer was targeted and. That's it. Was there any chance for you after that conversation to pull Jeffrey aside and say, listen, like. It was so close to travel that I probably could have asked her to take a walk with me, but Tony and all of them would have said, Jeffrey, no, and she would have stayed. So wow. it was that close to travel when she done it. That's what, that's what's crazy about it was we're sitting there and the muni challenge over with, I'm building a fire. And then when she calls me out, I mean, I don't, we're sitting there waiting to go towards tribal. It was that close to tribal when she done it. So oh, no. it was just really nothing just that I could have done. If I did grab her and take her to the side, there would have been three or four of them when it came with me. Okay. And it was, they were babysitting it was just, her at that They point. was babysitting her. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted her, I really wanted her to know where she messed up because she flipped and she told them she flipped with us. And then she flipped back. And so I was just wanting her to take a deep breath and to say, look, you got to use your head right here. You done told them that you flipped with us, so this is automatically they're not going to trust you anymore. So that's where that's why it was hard on me playing this game, watching people make decisions that I wish they would have just took a deep breath and used some common sense. You know, yeah. there's nothing wrong with being an Albert Einstein of the world. Use some common sense. You but know, you ain't got to be the smartest. <laughs> totally, I hear you on that. And do you think that that's a testament to how? I guess aggressive Tony's playing because he's the one who's running around and making sure like everyone's yeah. solid, you're here, I'm yeah. here, like this is what's going on and he sort of like really puts that hard energy out there. Yeah, he's putting it out there. He's playing the game hard. It's just what I don't understand is the blind sides that he's done done with like LJ and the lies that he's done Yeah. and his alliance is still sticking with him. I mean, he's running like, and he's doing... <laughs> I trust Tony and everyone else cast. I trust, I yeah. trust him. <laughs> What is wrong don't with ask people? me. That's just, I don't know. I just want to grab them and shake them. <laughs> like, what? I'm so confused. Yeah, this is right, it's tough to watch. Let's ask another question. This one's from Gabriel. Gabriel asked, when Spencer played as Idol, it looked like you and Spencer decided together yeah. who to play it on. Did yeah. this happen? It did. Uh, we talked, we was in the water, and we talked about it. He didn't know which way to play. And at the time, he, he thought about playing it for me, but if we had some kind of inside scoop, like if anybody could have said, okay, we're targeting 
Jeremiah Moore or we're targeting Spencer Moore, we had nothing. We had nothing on. Nobody was budging. That uh, that alliance is right now is strong, and they are not budging. So it was a 50-50 shot. The only thing I had going for me is I was hurt. I was hurt bad. Um, I was probably running on about 40%. I was going to be awful at the next challenges coming up. Unless I got feeling better, I was going to be awful at them. Mm. And I was really thinking, I said, if they really use their head, this is the time they should be targeting Spencer, and he can play his idol for himself. But but still, it was just, it was one of them things. When we went into tribal that night, Spencer did hesitate before he even walked up to give it to Jeff. He hesitated and was like, he didn't know what to do. But I had told him before, I said, dude, I said, you found it. I said, you go by your gut or your heart, whatever you feel. I said, right now, I mean, it was 50-50. Nobody was budging. So it was either going to be me or him. And it would have been bad on him if he played it for me. Then he got voted out. Right. You know, that's happened before. And... Um, but it was just he made his decision and as soon as he made his decision tony yelled out inexperience inexperience and i knew right then i said tony just wouldn't be yelling that out so i knew i was going home i said dang but i was still hoping on somebody like Cass, who's done made two dumb decisions that maybe she'll just write down tony's name or you know jeffrey's name or somebody like that you never know she's it's rival so, yeah and so i was sitting there hoping i said maybe one of these people would just write somebody and let it go to a tie yeah and see but um i know that would have been way more fate. exciting it would Everyone. way more exciting so but it's what it is Too i'm sitting bad. here yeah. <laughs> all right khalid asks if jeffra flipped and it would have been four versus four were you prepared to draw rock i was i was because at the time um i had nothing else me and spencer had nothing else but spencer played his idol he was safe um, Tosh was safe. I had nothing else. So, yeah, yeah I definitely would. Have. Just just to see what happens. Because but you guys would have been safe, actually. You and um, who was the other oh, yeah, person? You, right. Who uh, were you guys voting? Woo. Woo, woo yeah. You and Woo yeah. would, have been, yeah, would have been safe. And yeah, then everyone else would have had to draw rocks. Right, everybody else. So. But let me ask you this before we move on from the tribal right. questioning. What was Tony talking about saying his idol was fake? He's like, oh, this is a, it's a fake one. It's he a started something up uh, when Sarah was still on there. And uh, he said he had a fake idol that he had made. And so he just wanted to bring his bag of tricks. At the time, I didn't know he found the special idol until I watched the episode. Okay. And uh, so we really, me and Spencer and Tosh, we really didn't think. I knew it was a fake because every idol that has been played has been a necklace. Been around has been a necklace. And he brings out some kind of fake mess. And it was a square. And he wouldn't, um, he wouldn't even, you know, unwrap it. Even if we confronted him about it and said, you know, once you won't you show us what it is or throw it in the fire or something like that it still wouldn't have mattered the outcome because spencer still would have played it for himself he was just trying to start something up and we know it was fake and it didn't it didn't it didn't mess up um the um yeah it, it didn't, didn't change the vote it at didn't all change or whatever vote at all. it wouldn't change it at all i so. know but i was thinking oh my god is he gonna tell Right. That he has this superpower idol. Yeah, because I'm surprised he didn't. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't too, because he just right. comes out with everything he he yeah. wants to say, you know, yeah. and he just can't hold it in. He's so excited. That's it. So I thought he was just going to burst out with the news and say, "Oh, guess what? Free golden ticket to then." Right. I mean, and that's what that idol gives to someone because you all had it in Cook Islands. Mm -hmm. You could re you could play the idol after the votes, and yep. there's no chance that people are going to vote for you after that right. because all you have to do is it's just going to bounce off on whoever you vote and that yep. person's gone and yep. so everyone wants to protect themselves so yep. i just see there's no way tony's going anywhere you're right he's he's tough right now he's tough it's just i hope everybody gets together and really sees wow he's the biggest threat right now over spencer and over all of them he's the biggest threat and they get together and they vote him out love the dude to death but he's he's the biggest threat so he's far he's playing well he's he playing is. well well I, uh, the only thing person i think that could sort of throw him for a loop would be trish yep and i don't see her doing that I don't, you know she's the whole season so far, being there with her, she never wanted to talk strategy with me. She was tight with her line. She didn't want to talk strategy, and she was just being the sweetheart that she is. She just kind of done her own little thing. Until the last two episodes, I started to see, I'm like, wow, Trish has really got a little strategy. So yeah. you never know. She might come out, and she might can turn this whole game completely around. But as of right now, up and up until me getting voted off, I mean, they're not. But they love Tony to death. They're not budging, and he's just. He's just, he's, he's got them on strings. So since your strategy was to be the, ni the nice guy, do you think that nice guys finish last? I think since the season of JT, I think the nice guys are gone now. I think it's going to be going hard. Down. It's going to be hard for somebody to ever come in and be even 80% honest. 
and being a super nice guy and win this game. I think it's, it's gotten to the point to where it, it, it looks like in the past seasons it's starting to get built around people that are being dirty, people that are being wanting to be a villain, mm. and it's getting to that point. Um, yeah, it, it kind of hurt me. It kind of hurt me. I mean, I want them over, but it was just – a couple of girls sealed my fate. Yeah. Cass and Jeffers sealed my fate. Yeah. So. Well, LJ had a very similar strategy to you, too, yep. being a nice guy, being yep. from the beauty tribe. And LJ got a lot of fans tweeting him with what? marriage proposals <laughs> and wanting to get together. So I was wondering if you had any Yeah, I've had a few of them. Fan reaction? Yes, I've had a few of them. I've had people hit me up and said, if I live in North Carolina, I'll be at your doorstep. Will oh. you marry me? Oh. Uh, if you need comfort, i seen your Ponderosa video, if you need comfort, just let me know. I'll be there. <laughs> Girls and yeah, guys alike. Yeah, I've had a little bit of everything. Yeah. Saying that means so. Yeah. <laughs> Don't matter. Would you ever accept one of those? Like, what would a fan have to do to get a date with you? I don't know. It's just... Um I'd have to see their personality, you know. If I got personality and if I got smooth hands, maybe, maybe. Smooth, smooth hands. Oh, to give you a nice maybe. little background. Yeah, that's right. To rub that knot out of rub your Rub that mouth. knot out. Okay. Hear that? <laughs> Guys and girls alike, yeah? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's oh, ask man. another fan question. This one's from Bruce. Bruce asks, why didn't you look for the idol? You know, I did. I turned that jungle inside out. Um, I looked for it every day. Even when I got hurt, when everybody walked off and they knew I was hurt and I was just laying there, I would weasel my way up and I would take off. Um, and it's Were you crazy. on all fours? Were you no, like, no, doing no. The I was crawl? just, I was walking like I was bow legged and kind of like maybe like if I was pregnant, I was just walking. Around. <laughs> I was just taking my time. Um, but yeah, I did. I looked through the jungle. Um, I looked everywhere, and it kills me. Like when I see where Tony found it out, I knew the tree that he found it out, but I really didn't. It's just like when you're when you're cleaning your room or something. You always miss that one little spot, and it was just something that I didn't look. <laughs> and that's over. where the treasure is buried. That's where the treasure is buried, and it was it would have been a game changer if I could have found it. But I did. I looked everywhere, and a son, which a lot of people on the show did look for him. Then there were some who didn't, but I did every day. I looked every day. Cause it, I mean, it looked like you could definitely have used it or Tasha or Spencer did you guys ever combine forces and look together uh we did uh and the one <laughs> the time we did is when we come back off the reward challenge from the Outback Stake um and Spencer as soon as we get to camp he just it's raining we're all sitting there and everybody's like we're Spencer I'm uh, like no yeah. you know, I didn't know he had it but we're there's only one place he could be and uh but after Wu stole it and he come running into camp and his back is bleeding and he's yelling for me going man you gotta come I thought they got in a fight I said oh no and so I'm like running a hundred mile an hour and then he tells me that, you know, um Woo stole it. I yeah. said, oh man. So then here comes Tosh and then we all then we right. all join together and look for it. Uh look for that idol. Now for the special idol, a lot of people didn't look for it. It was just basically I know me and LJ and Spencer and Tony, um I'm sure Woo probably did some too, but we we searched that jungle part yeah. for that and Tony found it. Out of all people. There were no clues for no it. No right? clues and then mad props to Tony for finding I a I mean finding an idol without a clue because I mean we searched hardcore for it and he found it. So and I it Congratulate like him on that. Buried. It was like covered. For it was sure. just covered. So, and that's what's bad about it. You know, just a stick would have knocked it he's over. Good. So, you know, he's doing good. He's playing the game. Yeah. So, I wish but I would have found on, it. The thing about Survivor is when you're looking for these idols, it's just like a rock, you know? It's like yeah. there's tons of, you're living on an island where there's a lot of rocks and dirt. Yep. So it is really hard to find. It's hard to find. It's like a needle in a haystack. You mm -hmm. don't know. It can be in any hole, any rock. Like when we was on the Beauty Tribe, if it wasn't for Morgan, as soon as we come onto the beach, we looked over and I was like, there it is. You know, she's at that spot. But then again, we searched and we never found it. So we found another place on the island that we went. So you never know where these things are yeah. hid, and they hide them so good. I have to give them, I just, Survivor's unbelievable. <laughs> would you play again? In a heartbeat. You um, would. Just like the old slogan, the old, I can't even talk, in a New York minute. In, in a New, New York, York minute, York I would minute. do it. Um, and you would know about that because you are a fashion model. And I'm a fashion model. And fashion so. models work in New York. Yeah, we know it. that. So, yeah. Um, okay, so this is our very last question. Okay. This one comes from Edison. What was the toughest part of the experience for you? I would love to say that it was just surviving, but I was used to it. I knew it. I guess it's... 
it's just a paranoia of you don't know who's going to backstab you. You don't know who's plotting against you. You're putting your trust into 17 other people that you've never met in your life, and you're hoping that they're telling you the truth, and then something happens, kind of like what Cass did, or, or like a big blind side happens. That's the toughest part of the game is really you're sitting here, and you're like, who is really with me? Mm. Are they lying me to my face? And then when you go to tribal council and you're seeing your name pop up, when my name popped up with Alexis, I mean, my heart sunk. And then when it popped up again with LJ, I was just like, oh, I'm going on. You know, these people, what is going on? It's just, but you got that paranoia. And that's that's the toughest part of the game. Surviving, if you got any kind of outdoor skills at all, you can survive. You know, that's hands down. But you're just, you've got people that are supposed to be there to win a million dollars. Some people are not, and some people are. And um, you don't know what's going to happen. So, um that's that's been the hardest part of the game is putting your trust into somebody and, yeah. then, and then you get voted out so what's been your recovery since coming back what's um, been your process everything's been good it took a while I, you know i come back to the united states i was hurt and it, it took a while to get better um i lost all that weight so a bunch of cheeseburgers and french fries and hot dogs oh, really? me gain all really the watching back. your model uh, diet yeah it was i had an unbelievable model figure going on for like a month <laughs> <And> <laughs> maybe, that's why I went, maybe that's why i wouldn't get booked for like a month so um yeah it's just but the recovery is it's been great everything's back to normal just working out hardcore um yeah just just ready for the phone call if they ever call me back if not uh just the recovery is great it's yeah. just yeah, just getting back into shape just cruising in shape. just cruising all right, well, I have a special gift for you. All right. Since we looked at your model shots at oh, no. JeremiahWoodModel.com, <laughs> we have a little gift for you from the CBS store. It is our this traditional is awesome. survivor towel Sweet. for you to dry off after yeah, you I'll do those. Off. This will be photo shoots. Every time I'm at the beach, I'll be laying on this. When I get out of the water, I'll be laying <laughs> send on Send us a photo. <laughs> I will send you all kind of photos. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, you guys can get yours at cbsstore.com, of course. And as usual, stick around for the exclusive extended preview right after we wrap up. Jeremiah, yep. thank you so much. Thank you it's so been much. Great talking with you. It's been great talking thank to you. Thank you guys for watching and all your great questions. We'll see you next week. Bye. Oh, please, says, congratulations, celebrate with a feast. Ah, what is it? Ah, Trish, lift up my shirt real quick. <laughs> when they came in with the female, ooh, he goes, oh, my back is really bothering me. And I was like, oh my gosh, are you okay? And I opened it up and I almost wet my pants when I saw it on his back, the wallets of money. And I knew it was the auction, so I was really excited because I knew at least I'd get something to eat. And that's all I wanted was something to eat outside of rice. You've Can seen you? it all before, and now you're actually in it. If there's something you've been craving, <gasps> you'd better be quick to win it. Ah! Ooh! Ooh! Pizza, burger. Oh. <laughs>